Hey there, fellow Tolkienites. So if you're like me, you find the History of Middle-Earth series both alluring and frustrating. There it is, 12 glorious volumes of Tolkien's Legendarium, and yet, when you crack them open, they're as complex as the Caves of Minigroth. In this video, I'm going to provide you with a simple breakdown of the 12 volumes. By the end, you'll understand how they are arranged and what works are contained therein. Before we dive in, would you do me the great honor of subscribing to this channel? Three, two, one. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, so the first thing we need to understand about the history of Middle Earth, and this breaks my heart to say this, but it is not a tale of years, as it were. Uh, it is not a chronicle of all of these events in the history of Middle Earth that uh, you have not yet heard of. Uh, it is not a collection of new stories for the Legendarium, at least not mainly. What it is, is a textual history of Middle Earth. So basically, in 12 volumes, we see how Tolkien created Middle Earth over the course of his life. Okay, so, start, so it's arranged more or less chronologically in terms of Tolkien's own life. Okay, um, so... I think the best way to understand this is really to focus on uh, three distinct eras. Okay. By the way, I should note it was compiled after Tolkien's death by his son Christopher. Right. So Christopher compiled this thing over the course of a few decades um, and edited it, and he had to go through all these notes, and it was incredible work that he did. Um, but that also kind of adds to the confusion. Okay. Um, because Christopher will often make editorial comments that are helpful, but, you know, it's like, okay, who's speaking right now, right? It's, it's kind of hard to just dive in in the middle sometimes. So there's three, there's, there's kind of th th uh, three phases that we need to break it down into, okay? And it basically all hinges around Lord of the Rings, right? So it's basically before Lord of the Rings, during the writing of Lord of the Rings, and after Lord of the Rings, Okay. Um, so before Lord of the Rings is, uh, the period of 1915, uh, through 1937, right? Those are, and all these dates are going to be rough dates, right? These are, you know, uh, best guesses. Um, and it's not always clear even from the text when Christopher thinks some of these things uh, arose, but in general, that's the organization of this series. So we have, uh, before Lord of the Rings, right? And this comprises the first five volumes of the history of Middle Earth. So let's walk through uh, just at a high level what's in these volumes. All right, so there you go. You see the covers. The first two volumes of the history of Middle Earth are uh, called the Book of Lost Tales, volume one and two, all right, or part one and part two. Um, the Book of Lost Tales, basically think of it like this. These are the earliest versions of the legends that would become the Silmarillion, okay? Tolkien wrote these in the period uh, essentially between 1915 through 1920, maybe a little into the early 1920s, right? Um, but, you know, this is when he was still, you know, still fairly young. Um, and he, but, but we see, if you read these stories, you're going to see a lot of familiar things. Now they look different for sure. All right. But certain of the stories look very similar, right. To the ones we see later on, um, a special note, there's a really interesting frame narrative called the cottage of lost play, um, that we don't ever really see again. Uh, but that's the very first thing that kicks it all off. Um, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a pretty cool little note, um, you know, just to just to consider there. But the Book of Lost Tales Part 1 really focuses on what we might think of as the, the first half of the Silmarillion, right? The stories that take place more or less in the Blessed Realm, okay? While the second half focuses on those big stories of Beleriand, right? The great legends of Beleriand. Um, Tenuviel slash Baron and Luthien, Tuor, Turin, the fall of Gondolin, the ruin of Doriath, the voyage of Erendil. Um, these are the big stories uh, that are in the Book of Lost Tales Part 2. So that's the first couple of volumes of the history of Middle Earth. And remember, we're still before Lord of the Rings. There we go. And now the next one, volume three, is the Lays of Beleriand. The Lays of Beleriand is, bas is basically comprised of two things. One, a epic poem of the legend of Turin Turambar. And two, an epic poem of 
the story of Baron and Luthien. Um, and these are pretty incredible, right? I mean, he wrote epic poems for both of those stories. Now, you know, they, all of the works in here are more or less incomplete, but they are, but they're edging on the end of complete, at least in terms of drafts, right? Um, there are a few things that are very, they're just sketches. And, and one of the greatest things is that Christopher just throws all of these little things in there too. He'll like have a chapter devoted to something and then he'll just have like, okay, I found this too. It's like a little fragment of this. You might find it interesting. So there's just, there's tons of fascinating things contained herein. Um, but the Lays of Beleriand were composed between 1920 and 1931. So after he wrote the Book of Lost Tales, this is what he spent about the next decade doing. Um, and then volume four, still before Lord of the Rings, is The Shaping of Middle-Earth. All right, so this is the 1930 version of the Silmarillion and supplementary writing. So basically, Tolkien took what he had written in the Book of Lost Tales, and he started to form them into something that looks starts to look a little bit more like we think of as the Silmarillion now, right, just in terms of its compositional overall structure. Um, and, of course, the, right, you know, the stories themselves, the legends themselves, developed significantly during this period as well. Um, but when Tolkien, you know, Biographical details talks about like, you know, when The Hobbit was, was a success, wanting to publish The Silmarillion, he's talking about like this, like this version, right? Not the Book of Lost Tales, but this version. Volume five is The Lost Road and Other Writings. And this is significant, again, before Lord of the Rings. This is significant because it's the first version of the Legend of Numenor that we get, right? Um, and it's a fascinating thing all in and of itself, really wasn't directly connected to Middle Earth, um, you know, from the outset, but it's one of those things that, you know, like The Hobbit, that got absorbed into Middle Earth. Um, so, uh, in, into the legendarium that he'd established with the Book of Lost Tales and then the Silmarillion. So, um, so really what we have between volumes four and five are the the version of the Silmarillion that he tried to get published, and he hoped to get published really in the late 30s, but never happened. By the way, if you're enjoying this, go ahead and hit that like button and drop me a Magavanan in the comments. All right. You can even just put MG if you want. If you don't have to spell Magavanan, you might take your best stab at it. All right. So uh, jumping ahead. So we've got volumes one through five out of the way. Now we are in the era of the writing of Lord of the Rings. So what you see here are volumes six through nine. All right. The first one is The Return of the Shadow. The second is The Treason of Isengard. The third is The War of the Ring. Whoops. And the fourth is Sauron defeated. So these four volumes, I mean, essentially, this is the this is the early versions, the drafts of Lord of the Rings as Tolkien was creating it. So, you know, very interesting for you know from a textual history perspective of the Lord of the Rings. Um, so we have uh, the Return of the Shadow, Volume Six, focuses on the development of the story from the start to the Mines of Moria. Um, volume seven, the treason of Isengard focus, focuses on, uh, where we left off in volume six to, uh, meeting Theoden, right? When the fellowship meets Theoden. Volume eight is the war of the ring and it's from Helm's Deep to the opening of the black gate. And then volume nine is Sauron defeated, which is the end of the Lord of the Rings. And it also contains this thing called the notion club papers, which was kind of the second version of the Numenor legend. Um, and it's also just really interesting how he frames this all too, right? Um, but this period of writing covers between uh, roughly 1938 and 1949, okay? Um, some of it may extend back into 1937. Some of it may, may go a little beyond 1949. But, you know, that's the period during which Lord of the Rings was primarily composed. All right. And then, so that's volume six through nine. And then we have volume 10. Uh, and really, we can think of volume 10 and volume 11 and volume 12 as the after Lord of the Rings uh, works, okay? So we've got Morgoth's Ring, all right, which is right here. And let's go back to how we thought about the Book of Lost Tales, right? So Book of Lost Tales Part 1, these are the, the legends that take place. First half of the Silmarillion, as we think of it, stories that take place in Amon and, you know, the Blessed Realm. And then the other half, the Part 2, was the legends of Beleriand, okay? Uh, the later part of the Silmarillion. So... Uh, what we have with Morgoth's ring are the legends of Amon, uh, of the Silmarillion, right? The legends, you know, this, the first part of the Silmarillion, the later development of these stories post Lord of the Rings, all right? And then with um, with the War of the Jewels, which is volume 11, it's the legends of Beleriand, right? The second half of the Silmarillion post Lord of the Rings development. And Tolkien did a lot of work post Lord of the Rings, um, 
to develop these stories, right? He spent the rest of his life really like working to try to get the Silmarillion just like as perfect and up to up to the task as he want as he dreamed it could be. Um, so, and then we have um, the peoples of Middle Earth. Okay, so this contains. Um, the development of the Lord of the Rings appendices, as well as the New Shadow, which was the you know attempted but uh, very quickly aborted sequel to Lord of the Rings. Disappointing, I know, and uh, and just some more really interesting Middle Earth outtakes. In fact, I'd say volumes ten through twelve are really the most fascinating to me. There's a lot of really interesting stuff in there, um, and, and I think that's partly because Tolkien was able to really kind of start digging in to the details. You know, he'd had he'd had these stories formed. Lord of the Rings really brought the whole legendarium together for him. And he was able to just kind of dig in and think much more deeply about all these things. Um, you know, rather than just trying to like kind of rewrite what he'd already written. Um, so anyway, that is a breakdown, right? So again, easiest way to think about it, there's there's three divisions, right? Before Lord of the Rings, volumes one through five, writing Lord of the Rings, volumes six through nine, and after Lord of the Rings, volumes ten through twelve. If you keep that in mind, that really helps you think about it and, you know, put it all into perspective. Um, So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, if you haven't already, I really appreciate it if you uh, subscribe to this channel, maybe even click that notification bell and, um, you know, just tell people about this video if they're wondering about the history of Middle Earth and how to understand this series um, if they have interest in reading it. Um, We have also on the Tolkien Road podcast done several in-depth episodes on, on the different volumes. So if you'd like to check those out. Uh, you know, search for those on the Tolkien Road channel, right? Um, I think you'll find them pretty helpful. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk at you next time.